Hello and welcome to section 2, Missing Values, the Effect on the Likelihood Function. In the previous section, we saw how to learn the CPDs, the parameters of a Bayesian network using a data set. We saw that it was just as simple as enumerating over the data set. Here we want to take the challenge one step further. We want to see how we can learn the parameters in the presence of some missing values. For example, if you look at this data set now, there are some question marks, meaning that the value of that variable in this particular instance was not known. For example, the first individual that we collected the data set for, we see that their COVID result was reported, but not whether they put on a mask or not. Social distancing, flu, cough, all the other ones were reported, but not allergy. How can we learn the parameters in this situation? Let's start simple. Back to our COVID mask example. We saw that the likelihood function can be written in this form when we have a complete data set. We simply counted how many times mask was zero, how many times it was one. So here it's eight times one. We put beta and one to the power of eight and so on. But here, imagine now that we have the first instance of mask unknown. So instead of having C1 equal to 1 and 1 equal to 0, which was the previous case, now we have C1 equal to 1, but mask is unknown. How can we calculate the likelihood in this case? Well, we divide it in two cases. Remember the idea of marginalization? So we assume once that M1 is 0 and Second, we assume that it's 1, and then we calculate the likelihood for each case. If m1 was 0, well, the likelihood wouldn't change because we already assumed in the previous data set it was 0. If it was 1, though, well, it, it's easy to calculate what happens, just these powers will change. So here it will be 3 instead of 4, 9 instead of 8, and you can see that the remaining terms can also be calculated similarly. But what should I do with these two? Remember marginalization, P of A and B. If you want to get only P of A from there, well, you just add them up. Same idea here. These are probabilities, probability of data with respect to the parameters. You want to marginalize over M1, so I just add the two probabilities or equivalently the two likelihoods. And if I do that, I can factorize this term out, and this one, and this one, and at the end, I will get this summation term. Ooh, this is not looking good. It's not decomposable anymore. So it's not like the previous case that I could just easily take the derivative with respect to theta m1, for example, and it would only appear here. No, now it also appears here and appears there. Inconvenient to take the derivative and it could result in very complicated calculations. So what can we say about the general case? Let's partition the variables into observed and hidden variables, or missing values, uh, missing variables, for each instance t. It's not too difficult to see that the data, if it's iid, then we can write down the likelihood in this form. So previously, we didn't have this summation term. It's because here, if we started from the likelihood, we would have P of data given theta, but for each instance, psi1 to psi t, and each instance, all of them were observed. Here, the, the data will become only the observed ones. So I will only have OT here. And this is the same as if I marginalize out over H of T, the hidden ones. So I'm adding this up here. If you recall from the previous slide, the idea is to write down M1 into the likelihood and see when we, even when it's missing and see what possible cases it can take, add them up. Exactly the same as what we're doing here. Now, this summation, well, it doesn't allow us to decompose the likelihood anymore. 
So it's a summation of several likelihoods or probabilities. That makes it multimodal. It's no longer a unimodal function. It doesn't have just one peak, one maximum. It may have several local maxima. So unimodality of the likelihood function is lost. The number of possible assignments in the summation is exponential in the number of missing values. So that can cause trouble when calculating the terms. Decomposability into likelihoods for different parameters is lost. All of these make it computationally challenging to find the maximum of the likelihood. So if you want to find the global maximum, it's no longer as easy as before. We cannot easily find a closed form. So we should use other approaches for parameter learning in the presence of partially observed data. That's the main message. No obvious single solution here that can solve our problem. But if we just go back to our example, we saw that the likelihood becomes so complicated. You may say, wait, wait, wait a minute. Can't we simply ignore this first row? So we just, okay, some, some of our data instances have missing values. We just don't look at them. Throw that instance away. Do it as we did it before. So I just take this out. And then if I do the calculations, I will get this term as I have here. Doesn't just... Does that work? If you want to know the answer to this question, watch the next video. Thanks for your attention.